Wiring model railways for DCC is apparently quite simple. It's, after all, just the two wires. So before I put away uh, Chadwick TMD and move on to enlarging the layout, I thought I'd put the boards on their side so you can see just how simple this wiring really is. The layout's actually wired into three different power districts. There's a power district for the loop that runs around the outside, there's a power district for the loco shed, and a power district for the fuel depot. And the advantage by having different power districts is if you have a short circuit on one of them, then the other two will still remain live. So if I drive a loco into a point that's set the wrong way, let's say in the loco shed, then the locos and trains running around on the other, other circuits will remain, will, will remain running and their sound won't cut out. Having turned down the lights, hopefully you can see that over on the right hand side there are two illuminated buffer stops at the end of the fuel depot. There's also an illuminated buffer stop next to the tunnel mouth and that buffer stop is at the end of a head shunt which is part of the loco shed network. If I short out the uh, the track on the uh, on the head shunt the rest of the layout remains active as you can see when I when I short these out you can see that the buffer stop here will go out but the other two buffer stops remain, remain switched on and that's because of something called um, a PM42 made by Digitrax um, which is a power district uh, safety feature the PM42 actually has four outputs, but I only, I'm only using three of them. So let's turn these boards on their sides and I can show you how it's all wired up. So clearly it isn't just two wires, is it, to run DCC, but then uh, I, I imagine you realise that from the start. As you can see, I've knelt at the, uh, the altar of Digitrax to run, the, to run this layout, um, but there are other uh, decent manufacturers around. Um, there's Lens and all, all sorts of other companies that can do just as good a job, I imagine. I mentioned earlier the PM42. Um, was a device that was used to break down the power feed to the whole layer into four separate sections um, although I only use three of them and you can see on this PM42 here that there are uh, four relays and uh, it's the bottom three that I'm using to send um, to the loop track, the loco shed and to the fuel depot. So that's the layer protected from short circuits but what else can the Digitrax components do? Well, this one down here is a DS64 and it controls points. Each DS64 control up to four points and they can be either slow action or solenoid type points. But the advantage of using this is that then all the points can be controlled from the handset. So this is the Digitrax handset and it's been around for years. I mean, there are, have been a few improvements. Um, it's all kind of quite, quite straightforward, really. To demand a loco, you just press one of the two buttons at the top, loco, the loco number, press the loco button again, and away you go. Um, you can also control a second loco at the same time on the second, on the second button. When it comes to points, because you've opted to use the DS64, you can then control the points from the handset, which is quite a simple uh, evolution. You just press switch and say it's switch at point number 12, press 1 and 2, and then throw or close, and the point naturally changes. It's all kind of straightforward and saves you having to use the kind of, of a button or a switch or a probe type system to change points. You can do it all uh, from the handset. This is the DCS, DCS100, uh, and this is the main brains behind the Digitrack system. 
um, your controller will go in here and then the other one, the other, the other opening then um, takes a cable like this onto the layout um, and it's called LocoNet. So therefore all the functions that go, go, that go on, all the signals are carried by LocoNet around the layout. It's all kind of straightforward. Um, every single component is connected via LocoNet. Um, so the DCS100 knows exactly what's happening right across the layout. This can take you a stage further that if you just don't want to drive trains like that, then you can go into uh, computer control. Um, and I found a chap on YouTube called Rudy, um, a European guy, um, and he has such a brilliant uh, set of YouTube videos um, and it really is exceptional, the knowledge that the chap's got. And he kind of led, leads the way with both Digitrack systems, Lens and other systems and shows you how to get involved and what computer control can really do. Of course, that takes you to stage further then when you must uh, be able to tell your controller where all your trains are and which pieces of track are occupied by which trains. Um, and that takes the wiring to the sort of more complex look that you have now when you need to use components such as this, which is something known as a BDL-168, again made by Digitrax. A BDL-168 can uh, control 16 um, different areas, so that, well, areas that are kind of known as blocks, um, so it therefore can tell um, the DCS-100 and then your computer program on a, on a laptop or whatever, um, which of those 16 blocks are occupied by trains, and then by installing the software that Rudy recommends, which is um, train controller made by a company called Railroad & Co, um, you can then drive your trains automatically via a mouse or a computer setup. Or you can then set up trains to run such as shuttles or circuits whilst you carry out other functions such as shunting and that kind of thing. There's three different levels of, uh, of train controller. There's bronze, silver and gold. Um, and naturally there's three different prices. I opted for silver. Um, I thought the bronze was a kind of a bit of an entry level and the gold was probably too, a bit too complicated. So I went for the silver option and I bought it for around about £300. It doesn't sound cheap, but what is it? The price of... It's cheaper than three locos, isn't it? So that's what I went for. And that's what makes this complicated... Well, sorry, the wiring look complicated. And rest assured, it's more, it looks more complicated than it really is. It's, it's, not that, uh, it's not that complicated at all. To control signals, Digitrax have made a, com a component called the SE8C. Um, and it works on a ribbon cable, as you can see them coming out one side, and then the loco net feed uh, comes in there on the left hand side. If I was sticking with um, Chadwick TMD in its current form, then I would have installed a great deal of signals right across the layout. But as I've decided to kind of draw stumps on it now and not take it on the road for exhibitions, um, then I thought, no, I won't progress the signals any further. What I'll do is rebuild the layout. Um, and then obviously rebuild the signal system and everything else in its entirety. To connect the boards together, what I've always used is these, um, these pin type chocolate block uh, connections. Um, and always quite straightforward. They simply plug one into the other. And as long as you've wired it up correctly in the first place, then it's a piece of cake really. And again, there's, the, there's another one there, which I may use for the, uh, the main bus wires. Of course, all these components need to be powered up. Um, and the BDL168, their 12 volt feed is an integral part of the system. Whereas these uh, DS64s um, need a separate 12 volt power source. And I invested um, in a transformer from Maplin's and then just spliced a few ends on it to give it the right length. Um, and they just simply click straight into these components. And then when you're when you're setting it up at a show, it was actually quite simple just to jump underneath the boards and then plug these cables in to power it all up. And also, if you've got a snag, it's quite easy then to isolate one component at a time rather than have uh, a 12 volt th feed running straight through the whole board. Because then, if obviously if you've got a power problem, then you don't know actually where the snag is. It's very much much more difficult to isolate it. The point most I've used are the standard Pico solenoid points um, because 
taking it again, on, taking the day out, out to shows, um, I think they were more durable than the sort of slow action tortoise type points. On reflection now, um, what I should have done was wire them up with these, uh, these seat points. I think they're more reliable, um, but I suppose in the fullness of time, I'd like to replace these with tortoise points, obviously just because you don't get the sound of gunfire when a new circuit is selected and train controller changes all the points automatically as it sets the route up um, for the locos. Um, hopefully I'll put a little uh, banner on top now so you can link it to a previous video um, which shows the, the, uh, the layout in action so you can understand what I mean by uh, when, you, when you do the routing. Well that's really the end of this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and see how, uh, how the wiring's worked. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it seems sort of bewildering, but it really isn't. Um, if you just take one step at a time, it's quite simple. Um, as you can see, all I've, I've, I've labelled all the tags on every cable, and I have a wiring diagram um, which I can always refer back to, um, so I know exactly what's wired to what and you know, where, how the BDL six one six eights are wired. Um, so fault finding and chasing snags, you know, isn't a major issue as long as you kind of you keep um, current with it and you kind of understand how it works, then it really isn't uh, any big deal. Of course, it can be expensive to start to start with, but then, you know, it's it's where you want to take your modelling. I like um, the automation of it as well as the, the, the building of scenery and buildings and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just thoroughly enjoy uh, the automation and the new technologies and the exciting things that DCC um, and Train Controller brings. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.